Thomas Kirubi is a eucalyptus farmer in Mathura area of Muranga. Kirubi feels the pinch of cutting down eucalyptus trees that were once an investment to him. He has however come to appreciate the decision he took. We caught up with Moses Waihiga, bringing down eucalyptus trees that he has grown for years. He now describes the tree as a selfish plant. Eucalyptus is the most economically viable option for farmers and studies show that a farmer can earn more by planting the species compared to other crops. But the problem with eucalyptus is that it sucks up huge amounts of water from the soil. It is fairly fast growing. And to be able to grow and support the growth, it generally outcompetes other plants that is growing with in terms of the requirements for nutrients. And because of this, the two farmers abandoned eucalyptus farming after the government launched guidelines. The policy outlines suitable areas for planting the tree, which include areas degraded through soil erosion and loss of soil fertility, areas with saline soils, farmlands and as plantations. Our advice in this regard has been that uh, farmers should endeavor to replace eucalyptus where they are growing in sensitive areas where they are detrimental uh, to the environment. As we were moving up, you could see some places are still having eucalyptus because they are far away from wetlands. When exposed to water, the roots absorb water, earning it the name Munyomai, meaning the water absorber in a local Kenyan dialect. The eucalyptus tree was introduced in Kenya as an exotic species from Australia. Would you say that this was a good idea so far? So it was important to have introduced eucalyptus because it's the first growing species so that to reduce the demand of wood energy which would have come then from our indigenous uh, forest. So it was quite important to have introduced eucalyptus uh, in, uh, in the country from that perspective of our, our growing uh, demand for energy for the industry and as the commercial needs for our, uh, for our wood resources continued, uh, even in the construction industry, in the building industry, in the paper, um, we find that eucalyptus has contributed uh, a lot in the supply of these resources. That the tree has a taproot that penetrates deep into the soil and thus it is important to plant the tree in places where it doesn't compete with other plants or where little else will grow. If you have a, a child that grows very fast, that child eats a lot of food and that is exactly with the eucalyptus. Water trickles away from the fresh log he just felled. The drops are pointed to the amount of water the tree absorbs. The damage it poses is evident in River Mathioya, whose levels had drastically reduced. But the corrective measures are bearing fruit. Swamps and springs are rising again, and this is a good aroma for the tea industry, which is a major economic activity in the area. Kanye Nini Tea Factory in Kangema is one of the major beneficiaries of the felled wood. The eucalyptus policy also demands that trees be eliminated from the ground completely in some areas. But this will be no main feat, as seedlings sprout from the main logs in which the trees are cut, making it difficult to eliminate. Some farmers have resorted to applying oil and salt that forces the trunk to rot and decompose after a while, but this mode of getting rid of trunks is discouraged because it's harmful to the soil. Rosalia Pondo for Channel 1, Earthwatch.